Hello farmers and welcome to the Kenyan farmer. I have decided to start today's video with a story. As a boy, I was always happy to spend my holidays with my grandfather back in the village. During honey harvesting season, I could see him making a smoker, or let me call it the torch. T-O-R-C-H. Yeah, that's it. I'm not talking about this but something more like this. His first step was collecting dry sticks from the bushes using a panga. About 20 sticks or so were enough to make a bundle. The sticks were bundled together with a natural string. One had to use readily available materials. So, where did he get the natural strings, you ask? He would get some branches from this tree. Beating the ends of the branches together would soften the bark, or let me say the skin for now. This would make it easy to pull the strings apart. Polythene or other synthetic strings could not be used. You avoid anything that would give toxic odor or smoke. Actually, you can even use fiber to make the strings. You will have to beat the sisal leaves to release the fiber steel. Banana leaves would also be another alternative to natural strings. The task was to tie the stems and make a solid torch. A spacing of around 15 centimeters from each note would ensure that the torch would not disintegrate in your hands as it burns. This was important because if you made a torch that would extinguish while you are harvesting, the bees would remind you of your poor workmanship. After making the torch, we would light it up in the evening as we were proceeding to the apiary site. The flames from the torch would help light the way, and once we were at the beehives, we could switch the torch to smoke mode, just like this. Okay, let me repeat that. Yeah, that's more like it. Smoky. Extinguishing the flames leaves the torch smoldering, or I should say smoking. If one did a good job in constructing the torch, it was reliable and it could last for hours. After the exercise, my grandfather would extinguish the torch completely. The torch would then be stored safely at the corner of the house and it could be used in the next season. This method worked fine, but it had some major drawbacks nevertheless. It could easily cause forest fires if handled by an inexperienced person. I was amazed to realize that even honeycombs or beeswax is flammable. The other thing is that the user had to have a powerful set of lungs to keep pumping the smoke into the hive during the harvesting process. So, later after joining school, I learned of this item called the smoker. It's quite a simple construction with a lid on top. An aluminum sheet body with a screen within separating two compartments. And finally, one side has some spring-loaded pumping mechanism. Come, let me show you the real deal instead of stories. Can you see the screen inside? Let me try and get it out. I thought it would come out easily. But it looks like it needs some form of Kenyan persuasion. Ah, I wonder why things always don't seem to work, especially when I'm recording. It makes me look bad especially in front of my subscribers. There, you see? The screen holds the hot charcoal over the lower section where the ash drops and the air comes in. I bought this piece back in 2020 for about 1,800 Kenya shillings, I think. And she performed as advertised. 
so it's worth it. The pumping system can be operated by a single hand to draw air from the surrounding into the body and force the smoke out by the top. I don't have to strain my lungs anymore. Actually, let me demonstrate how I load it. The first thing is to get hot charcoal that will act as a source of fire. I have decided to add some more charcoal just to ensure reliability. Two to four pieces is all I need to run for about two hours non-stop. I used the pump from time to time just to ensure that the fire doesn't get dull. The next step involves adding some wood shavings. The wood shavings help to generate smoke. Now, this is what is available for me, but you can also use dry grass or leaves, just that you will have to refill more often. I like carrying some more wood shavings for refilling in the field. Once you are sure the charcoal is hot enough, you can close the top lid. How do I use it in the field, you ask? I direct the smoker to the entry hose, pump enough smoke before opening the cover to start harvesting. I have removed the top bus and the cover from this hive just to show you that the exercise is successful. Now, let me talk about the next important safety item in beekeeping, the bee suit. Kenyan market, like most open economies, have both genuine and substandard products. I have one bee suit on my left with strong, heavy-duty material like jeans, and on the other side, a bee suit with shiny, light material that I noted as substandard. I have used both suits, and I can tell you to go for the heavy-duty one. You can even get quality gloves for it. I can list problems you will encounter with the substandard one, like broken zips, but just be advised. It's just not worth it. Farm conditions call for durability. I bought the quality one for around 4,500 Kenya shillings last year. Some people will sell the substandard one for the same price which I think is mischievous. Finally, let me take you through the dressing procedure. You will need an assistant and I will shortly explain as to why this is necessary. Firstly, I wear the hood, especially if you are using the substandard bee suit. I already have a long sleeve shirt. The next thing is to tuck the trouser into the socks. The idea is to seal any opening that the bees can use. Now that I remember, back in the village, we could do the opposite. We could strip naked. I kid you not. The bees used our bodies for shooting practice. At times, we could break and scatter to different directions, like a bunch of scared rabbits at night. Luckily for us, bees use sunlight for GPS and target location and so we could be safe after running a short distance from the hive. The following morning, my disfigured face told the whole unedited story. I spent a week hiding my face from the mirror and my girlfriends, looking like those old Mercedes military rories. Can't believe things I used to do just to feel like a man. I don't think the current generation that prefer flavored drinks and processed bread for breakfast could have survived. I hope they are not allergic to everything, especially the gospel. Anyway, I know better, so I do better now. Let me tell you from my experience, if you embark on this journey, you must be well prepared because you will meet a worthy adversary in the battlefield. Merciless warriors, there is a reason as why the Europeans call our bees the African killer bees. I'm also using some headgear protection to shield my head when the screen comes close to my skin. My assistant helps me to wear the head shield. 
The shield has a black net acting as a screen around it for you to see through. By the way, in agriculture, all these items or clothing are generally called personal protective equipments, PPE. Now I have a question to you, my friends. Does it mean because you are not allergic to bee stings, you don't need to use PPEs? Did you say yes? You have to use them. You have to love, protect, and care for your body. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit, remember? You can't afford to be naive or careless. I sometimes carry antihistamine or cetirizine tablets in my pocket when handling bees. Me or my staff may need first aid on site. I mean, I can't afford someone slipping into anaphylactic shock before getting into the hospital. Finally, a pair of gloves are crucial for protecting your hands. This time, I tuck in the sleeves into the gloves. I hope by now you understand why I am tucking in almost everything. I have once encountered hostile bees that have punched holes into my leather gloves. I once lost some livestock due to bee attacks. Imagine that. So take your time preparing yourself. Be that as it may, I have to show you how it's done safely. The other day on TV I saw farmers in the other parts of the world handling bees casually. But please, please, don't try that back at home. If you like my content, remember to like, subscribe and share. God bless you and see you in my next video.